province is providing an update on COVID-19 in that province. As we learn more about uh, the newest COVID-19 variants, uh, Omicron, and its impacts on our communities and on our health care system. As with many jurisdictions in Canada and to the south of us, case counts are rising rapidly and we must do everything we can to ensure our health care system can continue to offer patients the care they need when they need it. As those case counts continue to rise, so does the demand for testing at sites across the province. As a government, we continue to explore options to increase our capacity and alleviate wait times for those seeking a test. Starting today, take-home self-administered rapid tests will be available at provincial, uh, at provincial testing sites as well as at other locations to help protect vulnerable Manitobans. When an individual visits a testing site, the type of test they receive will now be based on their vaccination status. These, these changes are being introduced incrementally and will help manage current and growing demand for COVID-19 tests. Additionally, rapid test kits will soon be available at Manitoba Family, family Services offices. Uh, through child and family services agencies, as well as community living and disability services clients living independently. Manitobans are seeking a COVID-19 test for out of province uh, travel purposes should not attend provincial testing sites, rather they should seek out a private provider. Our number one priority is to protect the health and well-being of all Manitobans. We continue to have some of the most stringent public health measures in the country to minimize the spread of this virus and protect our most vulnerable. I want to thank Manitobans who altered or cancelled their Christmas plans to help minimize the spread of this highly contagious virus. Now as we approach the new year, a time that is usually filled with celebration, we are once again urging Manitobans to limit your close contacts at this crucial time in our fight against COVID-19. And so today we are here to announce additional measures to limit gathering sizes in all public places to help mitigate community transmission and to protect our hospitals and the people who need them most. With that, I'll pass it over to Dr. Rusin to expand on the new public health orders. Dr. Thank Rusin. You. Thank you, Premier. Uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Brand Rusin, Manitoba's Chief Provincial Public Health Officer. Uh, as we forecasted last week, we're seeing increased uh, daily COVID-19 numbers. Uh, since Friday, we've uh, reported uh, 2,154 positive cases. Um, these increased case counts means we are seeing an increase in demand for testing, and that increase in demand is uh, resulting in increased wait times, both to receive the test, but also to receive the test results. And so as that demand has uh, increased, we've also seen now this backlog of tests. Uh, so we are certainly under-reporting the, the number of uh, positives that we um, uh, that are circulating. Uh, we know that Omicron is, is here in Manitoba and circulating quite widely at this point. Um, we've seen a dramatic increase in our test positivity, and I wanted to address that uh, a, a little bit. Um, we see 19% provincially and 21% and in Winnipeg. Um, so certainly our numbers are increasing and we and we have a significant amount of transmission as we see in our daily test numbers the um uh, the test positivity has been uh, a change the way we can interpret that because of uh, how we're deploying our rapid tests. So many people are getting the rapid test to test at home and only those testing positive are returning for PCR tests. Therefore, we're, we're skewing to a to higher test positivity. Uh, so uh, this is just one of the indicators we look at. It's now changed the way we interpret that number, but it is just one thing we interpret. Um, but we also know at the same time 
we are seeing a dramatic increase in in test positivity and uh, cases at this uh, at this point. Uh, so we do expect that test positivity rate to be um, as high as it is, and we'll continue to look at all um, other indicators as well. Uh, so we know that in the Winnipeg region. Uh, of the test positives, where we're seeing the majority of test positives right now, uh, roughly 75% uh, of those uh, uh, test positives are Omicron. Uh, so we see that that Omicron is here, especially in, in Winnipeg. Uh, so again, uh, it's taken over as our most prominent strain in almost all regions. Uh, and um, so uh, at this point, we're not going to continue to provide uh, Omicron case data. Uh, we know that the vast majority of cases are Omicron, and that number is just going to continue to increase over, uh, over time. Uh, so the vast majority of people who screen positive will... Uh, be screening positive for Omicron as well. And so we know Omicron is highly transmissible. Um, it's uh, difficult to predict the uh, exact impact Omicron will have on our uh, healthcare system, um, but we know we, we need to be prepared for that. Uh, we know we can't um, rely on some of the reports of Omicron being uh, less severe. We know with the amount of transmission we're seeing, we're going to see that dem demand translating into uh, increased demand on the healthcare system. Um, so again, we need to protect that healthcare system uh, for everyone who needs it, all Manitobans need it, which means we need to decrease the amount of transmission that's occurring with, uh, with Omicron. So we already have orders in place that reduce uh, capacity for private gatherings. Those have been in place uh, uh, for quite some time now in Manitoba. Uh, we're introducing new public health orders that affect uh, the size of gatherings in public places. Uh, so effective tomorrow, we're reducing gathering sizes in public places for, for groups of vaccinated people. Uh, so gatherings um, much, uh, must not exceed 50% capacity um, of the usual capacity of space um, or now capped at 250 uh, persons, whichever is less. So these uh, capacity restrictions will affect restaurants, licensed premises, food courts, socials, movie theatres, concert halls, performing arts venues, um, outdoor ticketed performing arts events, museums, art galleries, outdoor and indoor sporting and recreational facilities, including dance studios and martial arts studios, uh, gyms, fitness centers, and yoga studios, um, indoor and outdoor ticketed sporting events, indoor recreational businesses, um, seasonal facilities and events, uh, religious services uh, and indigenous cultural events, bingos, casinos, businesses, and VLTs. Uh, so these uh, restrictions place capacity limits at these locations, including gatherings where uh, all attendees are fully vaccinated um, or, or under the age of, of 12. So again, I want to reiterate here that the, this whole purpose of having capacity restrictions and, uh, and reducing capacity size is to ensure there's distancing between clients. So we've heard of uh, reports of uh, different businesses where the, the overall capacity of their building is at 50, but they're cramming everyone into a single room. Uh, this is not the intent of the orders. That's putting those people, your customers, at risk of transmission. The 50% and the cap is there to ensure the distancing between clients. So please um, understand the intent of the orders. Please do what you can to protect uh, your patrons as well as, uh, as all Manitobans. Um, so we're also introducing restrictions to curtail liquor sales at restaurants and licensed premises at 10 p.m. each day. Uh, we know these uh, will change uh, the plans of many uh, individuals and, uh, and businesses, um, but we're putting them in place now um, in face of Omicron and widespread transmission to try to limit that transmission. Um, so we know hundreds of thousands of Manitobans have been vaccinated and continue to follow the public health orders, and, and I thank you for that. All Manitobans thank you for that. Uh, but these changes are necessary right now to reduce that risk um, of uh, uh, overwhelming the healthcare system. Uh, so again, we need Manitobans to limit contacts with others and uh, only get together with immediate family, really reduce those, uh, those plans. These orders have, um, have now uh, required the reduction in a lot of gatherings that were planned to take place. Um, and we know that's, uh, that's difficult, especially this time of year, especially the second year in a row. Uh, but we all need to do our parts to reduce the amount of transmi uh, transmission 
by reducing the amount of contacts we have. So follow those fundamentals, stay home when you're sick, go for testing and isolate until you get your test results. So again, um, we know it's challenging times. We know there's a long wait to get tested. There's a backlog, so people are waiting longer for their test results. But uh, a significant proportion of our test positives, we can't get a hold of. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're phoning people who are ill, who came for testing, tested positive, but no one's at home. Uh, and so it's, uh, I understand it's, it's a difficult time, but if you were ill and needed to get testing, you need to isolate until you get your results. Um, and we're finding a significant proportion of people went and got tested, but are out and about. So we really need to uh, rely on Manitoba and stay home if you're, if you're sick. Um, so again, wear a mask, wash your hands, uh, protect yourself and those around you by getting fully vaccinated. Get whatever dose you're immediately eligible for, whether that's your first, second or third. Uh, we've talked about those capacity issues uh, at the uh, testing sites. So again, uh, uh, younger, healthy uh, individuals, those under 40, no underlying health conditions. Um, if you're ill, uh, you could consider just isolating for 10 days at home. Um, you could still attend a health, uh, the, the testing site, get a rapid test and, and, and see what that shows. But either way, if you're ill, we need you to self-isolate until you get a test result. If you're not going to get a test result, it's for 10 days. Um, and that's going to help preserve some of that testing capacity for those that are um, uh, at risk of more serious outcomes. Uh, so appointments uh, for tests are available at some locations as well as drive through walk in, walk up. Uh, check those uh, locations and hours before you go because uh, during these, t these times sometimes there's, there's changes. Um, when you go for testing, um, you can expect uh, some of the uh, longer lineups, although the uh, strategy now with the rapid testing has uh, has uh, significantly improved that. Um, and that cur the current test turnaround uh, can be up to four days or even longer. So again, if you're symptomatic, we need you isolating for that 10 days or until you get a negative, uh, negative result. Um, not what anyone wanted to hear this time of, time of year, and again, the second year uh, in, in a row, uh, but it's what we need to do. So I want to ask Manitobans to be patient as we work on ways to further alleviate those delays uh, and uh, be kind to others. Uh, every, uh, people in line are, are going through the same thing you're going through, all Manitobans are, so let's be kind to each other, let's uh, make it through this like we have before. Um, Manitobans who are seeking COVID tests for travel purposes, please do not go to our testing locations where we need this for Manitobans who are ill. Uh, go to private providers if you need this for, test, uh, for travel purposes. Um, we didn't want to celebrate another holiday this way, but we got to keep each other safe. We have to uh, protect that healthcare system. So please be safe, please be kind. And um, uh, thanks again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass back to the Premier now. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rusin. And we recognize um, that this news will be disappointing to many to Manitobans as we round out the holiday season. Uh, but we, we must act now to protect our health care system and ensure Manitobans can access the care they need when they need it. We all have a role to play and I'm confident that the actions we take now will help ensure a healthier year ahead. Vaccines